In this presentation we are going to look at 2A ANOVA and particularly what we're going to look at is how to construct a table given certain pieces of information. So yeah, there we start off. Given the following pieces of information, construct the appropriate 2A ANOVA table. So essentially there's a sort of, uh, the word appropriate there is very loaded. Essentially first off it has to make mathematical sense and so there's two types of 2A uh, ANOVA table with uh, replicate measurements or without. So if there is replicate measurements you could have an interaction effect. If not, no interaction effect. Okay. So where, uh, if there are replicate measurements try go for an interaction effect. Okay. Also the mathematics make more sense, will only make sense in one case or the other. So you just have to watch out for that. So that's what I mean by appropriate. So two way ANOVA table, what we're given is the first following pieces of information. There are two factors, well that sort of makes sense because it's a two way ANOVA table. Uh, the factor A has two levels and factor B has three levels, okay? And there are 54 observations altogether. So think about that for a second. There are six, I'm just gonna scroll down here for a second, uh, six treatment groups Okay. Uh, two by three is six treatment groups, and there's 54 observations, so nine replicates per group. Okay. So essentially, what we can have is essentially what that means is that there is going to be an interaction effect. Okay. Now you don't actually necessarily have to include an interaction effect in your model if you don't want to. Uh, but just uh, like when we say appropriately, like uh, essentially, if you can do it, do it. Okay. Uh, for and also, also the some of the mathematics only makes sense if we include an interaction effect. So interaction effect in model. Okay. In our table. Okay. So that's that part taken care of. Also, just another remark we can use these values here to compute the relative degrees of freedom. Actually we'll start off our table now actually um, once I get this up and running so here we go no it's a bit jammed up. I'll tell you what I'll just there we go so what we'll do is write our table here I'll construct it on this page so source is essentially I'm going to just write out my uh, my table here so source and that's not working I'm just going to pause a second to just make sure it gets set up properly so there we go so the source A so I've unpaused it now and I sort of have this page ready source B okay now we have AB and also the uh, residual term okay I've just realized I forgot the row for totals. So uh, residual and down below it total. So now we're all set up. I'll just get rid of this line here. So down here we have total. So let's go back to our other page here and what were we told? Where is it gone? So there are two levels for factor A. So that means the degrees of freedom for uh, A is uh, the number of levels minus one, likewise for B. So in this case it's going to be one and two respectively. And where is my page gone? There we go. So it's going to be one and two respectively. Now, uh, what else are we told? We are told that, I'll just close that down, I don't need that. We are told that there are 54 observations altogether, okay? So that means the total degrees of freedom is going to be 53, okay? Now, what is the degrees of freedom for um, the interaction effect? This is the interaction effect here. 
is charming. This is where the, the interaction effect, the interaction of factor A and factor B. Well, it's the multiple of the degrees of freedom for factor A and for factor B. So this is also going to be 2. And the degrees of freedom for the residuals, essentially it is 1 plus 2. The, all the degrees of freedom have to add up. So whatever put, goes in there, would, that will give us a total of 53. The answer is, of course, 48. So 48. Okay. So the degrees of freedom for residuals is 48. Now that's moving along nicely. Okay. So let's go back to the uh, see what other pieces of information we're given. So we actually were given a lot there already. The variance of the response variable is uh, 174.2041. Okay. Now I am going to allow for a bit of rounding error. So I'm just going to take a very uh, uh, allow for a good bit of rounding error. So if your calculations are a little bit out, don't worry. I'm actually working off computer software, which gives me very precise answers. But you probably wouldn't get such precise answers with pen and paper. So the variance of y is ss total over n minus one. Okay. Now that means that one seven four point two zero four one equals ss total divided by fifty three. Now I am going to just state that the ss total is nine two three three. It's actually nine two three point two nine something. So I'm just going to round it up to the next integer. So nine. 2, 3, 3. So we're going to put that in our table here. 9, 2, 3, 3. Okay. So um, we're not, we haven't gone through all the information we've been given yet. I'm just sort of going through step by step. So the sums of squares for factor A and factor B is 4, 5, 1 and 2, 0, 3, 4. I'll actually just sort of make that bit clear. That's 3 there. Okay, two zero three four. My pen has turned blue. Let's put that in there. So four five one. Uh, two zero three four. Okay, but do we have enough information yet for these? Not enough yet. Uh, let's keep going. That the next piece of information. Ah, yeah, the sums of squares for residuals is uh, five seven four five. Five seven four five. Okay, so now we'll be able to uh, deduce what this is because SS. Hang on, I have it on the next slide here. Um, SS total is all of the other sums of squares added up. So sums of squares of A plus sums of squares of B plus sums of squares for the interaction effect and sums of squares for residuals. So this is just a little bit of calculator work and if we were to work it out we would find that the sums of squares for the interaction effect just by uh, simple deduction is 1003 and again rounding for a little bit of rounding error. Okay. Uh, so let's put that in there. Just got rid of my red line. Here we are. It's not red. So one zero zero three. Okay. Now we are able to do the um, mean squares. This is pretty easy. The mean squares are essentially the sums of squares divided by degrees of freedom. Uh, for most of the cases, we don't bother with the total one. So we only do it for this one, this one this one and this one. We don't bother where the mean square for total. So let's just add them in. So 451 divided by 1 is pretty straightforward. It's 451. Okay. 2034 divided by 2 is 1017. Okay. Um, 1003 divided by 2 is allowing for a bit of cal uh, calculator or is, what is it? It's 501 501.5. I was doing that in black, but I keep it in black. 501.5. And finally, uh, 5745 divided by 48, that would give me 
119.7 and again a little bit of rounding error I'm just reading directly off my uh, computer output there okay so that is the mean squares all the mean squares so now what we have to do is compute all the test statistics okay and the, in the case of the test statistics what do we do the test statistics are the mean square of everything else divided by the mean square for residual okay so we're going to divide all of the other mean squares um, by the mean square for residual so these are all all of the mean squares so 451 divided by 119 that I'm going to make that uh, 3.765 okay 1017 divided by 119.7 uh, I make that 8.498 and again that's I'm reading this directly off a computer 5000 or sorry 501.5 divided by 199 119.7 uh, and I make that to be 1.8 uh, 4.189 okay okay so just to be clear we're dividing all of these numbers respectively to get by this number to get the corresponding F values okay so that's two in over table um, exercise okay